morning. Welcome everybody to this edition of the North Tonawanda City School Update. It always spins a minute here, so we want to wait for that to make sure it's up and running. And um, we are here today. It is February 17th, and we're here with an update. And a reminder that this evening I will be doing a evening update as well. Uh, not a ton of um, new and exciting things. I think some of that is because uh, some of the school districts are still in the split spring recess of a winter break in February, which is this week, and then the Easter recess, uh, where a number of North Tonawanda and Niagara County districts have gone to uh, the two weeks at Easter. So uh, some schools are already closed, other schools closed yesterday because of the snow. So moving forward, the things that we think will be changing soon is the spectators for sports. A survey was sent out uh, to all the superintendents on that to give their comments and feedback on how we feel we can do that. The, we're looking anywhere from one to two spectators per player. And some districts that we play against have, like for example, their pool area uh, can accommodate a lot of parents, so that might be one per swimmer. But uh, we're sending in the survey now, the section six, so that they would review those and get back to us the week of February 22nd. So uh, winter sports spectators look like that could happen and change in the near future. And we'll let you know uh, through the sports as well as um, they'll text your players and let them know what they have to do. In the fall, there was a card that each player got so that they could um, come in and you would sign in after getting your temperature taken and, and answering the questionnaire to watch. So, so that's coming up. The other thing that school districts are working on is um, with more and more vaccine being given, um, what the state guidance might change to allow more students back in school in session. Uh, more days a week, right, instead of the hybrid two model. So uh, we had a meeting about that. We're working on that to send a letter to the state um, asking them to reconsider their guidance. So that, that's in the works as well. So a couple things in the works. We still gave out uh, breakfast and lunch yesterday, even though the district was closed. We hope you got that if you needed it. Today was another day for the breakfast and lunch service, and we'll continue to do that two days a week. Um, as long as we are allowed, and um, I'm assuming we'll be allowed as long as school's not open full time. So those are some of the things that uh, are current and happening. And uh, as far as the budget goes with the school district, we're working on that. Uh, the board will be getting some presentations today from the different departments. Uh, we're trying to put it all together. Uh, the state has said that there's no increase. It's basically a flat. Um, budget from last year and last year they took money away so we're just waiting for the clarification on that we hope to have that wrapped up and more information out uh, for everybody to review uh, throughout the month of May before the board adopts it in early April uh, throughout the month of March sorry the board will adopt it in April and then the votes in May March April May so we've got a lot to go on that there is a site on our web page that um, you can look at all the presentations they've gotten since uh, late December on the budget and uh, we'll be moving forward uh, twice a week uh, twice a month every other week with board presentations on that so uh, if you want to come we're, we are open in session uh, but we're just limited with the number of people that can attend. They're also live streamed, and you can watch those on the through the district website. And someone said, "Thank you for fixing the pool. It was always our plan. It just took us longer than we thought, so we're sorry about that." Is there a way to add live instructions or as on asynchronous days similar to Kenton model? So um, we're working with that at the seven through eight. 7 through 12 level where the teachers are doing more of that. At the K-6 level, we added the um, extra time per grade level uh, on the Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday for, for that piece. Uh, we're looking at different models for if we have to continue longer, uh, but right now, um, if you're not getting those extra, which would amount to um, two extra hours on those days, so if you're, um, you're in school Monday, Tuesday, uh, you get remote instruction on Wednesday, and then you would get the uh, 
added help on Thursday and Friday. So if you don't have that in line yet, you want to uh, call your building and make sure that you're getting the information. Should have been sent out through CSAW at the K3 buildings and Schoology at the 4 through 6 building. Yeah, so one of the things it says uh, what is offered at K3 is insufficient. So one of the things we're trying to do, um, because there's really no replacement um, for being in school, is to see if we can't work with the state, and that was our meeting we had today to send them and inform them that, you know, can we do something with kindergarten, first, second, third? Is there a way to do some things differently uh, to get those kids in sooner than later? Um, so that is in the works, and we hope to have an update for you. Uh, from them. I know that they did appoint a new commissioner of education and um, she seems to be taking the bull by the horn so to speak and we hope to get more information on her from her on that. How come more students go back if you still need social distancing? Not everyone can get vaccinated yet. Will remote continue through the year exams? Uh, so a couple things there. Exams are at the state level right now, which they haven't announced, but they had a questionnaire go out to school district superintendents, um, which we think they, they probably will look at doing something different with exams, like more like they did last year. But um, we're not sure on that because they're also talking about lessening our restrictions. And exams, especially at the high school level, are in June. And as we know, things are getting uh, changing by the minute and things seem to be getting better at the moment so um, there's no definite on exams. Um, if more kids could come back it would be based basically on the data and students so typically um, school districts haven't had a lot of um, tracing back to positive cases coming from school uh, and we've been doing a good job of the social distancing and wearing the masks and we feel that's why. But there are some reports out there and studies that they're looking at to say, you know, is it six feet? Is it three feet? Um, how, how can we get more kids in? So um, until they re late release all the restrictions, we'll have to offer some form of remote instruction. So that would continue and that could stop in April or it could uh, go through and, and stop in September if he, if he holds us in this uh, holding pattern we're in through June. NTI is doing an amazing job with virtual activities and videos. Great job, staff and students. We appreciate hearing that. Um, we know it's difficult to, when we, when we first started talking about it, we said, well, a kindergartner five years old, can we really expect them to be online for lessons at home uh, for five or six hours a day? And I think anyone who has a five-year-old knows it's hard to keep them uh, entertained through dinner, let alone um, four or five hours of watching a computer, nor is that probably the best alternative for uh, all that screen time. So um, that's our focus, is when can we get uh, the little ones back in and keep them safe. So are you looking to do anything different for intermediate or just K-3? Well, the focus among the superintendents were to sort of push the K-3 first and then intermediate would follow right behind that. Each district is um, organized differently, right? So years ago, North Tonawanda had K-6 buildings. Uh, there are buildings that have a K-1, districts that have a K-1 building. Uh, there are districts who are, you know, three through five, we're four through six. So they're all different, but one thing that um, we feel is um, pretty much the same throughout is that our little ones need to have a strong foundation and we really want to see um, at least K through three. Now the guidance could come out that it's through sixth grade. We see a lot of guidance going right now and suggestions K eight make differences, uh, maybe keep nine through 12 in the hybrid model. So um, that, that's all part of the research they're doing at the state level to give us that guidance. And we're sending them our data, our reports. We have to report every day uh, to the state the number of positive COVID cases and, and how that's following. I think they're using that data, especially at the different grade levels, to make uh, recommendations to go forward. City of Tonawanda has kindergarten and first grade in school four days a week. Kindergarten needs students at four days a week. So, um, yeah. So I would 
change your suggestion of kindergarten needs four days a week to kindergarten probably needs five days a week, right? That's what we want to get back to. Um, the the fourth day wouldn't be needed if we we lift the restrictions because there would be no virtual option at that point. We would be open as as regular business. So um, those are some of the things they're looking at and how they could um, make those changes and keep everybody safe and move us forward. So. Uh, Pre-K as well, right? Pre-K suffering as well, even though each district runs that differently or uh, contracts it out, uh, they've been under the same guidelines as us where they have to um, offer that virtual option. And we realize that everybody's families are different and some people have um, people in the household who have underlying health conditions and can't get vaccinated. Um, and what we're hearing is the vaccine is going to help and slow things down but it's not 100% foolproof. And um, we're still going to have flus and colds like we've always had before the COVID-19, uh, but they wanna make sure it's not going back to grandma, grandpa, mom, dad who have underlying health conditions because this COVID-19 affects them more severely. Um, so I think it's gonna be something we're gonna have to live with in the future. Um, you know, mask wearing may have to continue into next school year. Um, the president, new president here is, been on if you watch that saying that you know he's focusing on getting the little ones back in school sooner than later uh, but then he also says that uh, the mask wearing the hand washing all that's very important so um, who knows what tomorrow will look like but I, I do feel confident that there will be changes in the near future I would think that you know the people are saying you know all these different levels need four or five days a week um, schools designed right five days a week that's what we want to get back to um, and so that's what we're, we think when we see changes made they'll be lifting the restrictions so schools can open in that way now just like I have some comments here where people are saying um, will virtual still be offered because I can't get a vaccine and we have people in the household um, you have to remember that the people who work in the school district have those same concerns, right? So teachers are taking care of their parents. Um, there are some older um, volunteers in the district. We, we had to discontinue our, our grandparent program that we had at the K-3 building because of their safety. Um, these are all things that come into play on how we can open safely and, and what can be offered and what can't. Uh, so we're hoping that um, there's an end to this very soon. Uh, someone's asking, are teachers in school on Wednesdays? And that answer is yes. The district offers no support for families that have two working parents or single working parents. Support as far as um, daycare for, for when they're not in school, is that what you're referring to? Um, I. I think that's what you're referring to in that question. And um, you are correct, we don't have a daycare system here, we have a school system. Uh, we do offer the before and after school programming, but that doesn't help you during normal work hours. So um, we realize that's a problem across the country and in districts where um, I know Buffalo struggled with that a lot because they weren't even open until recently for hybrid instruction. So um, it definitely is a real concern that our families are dealing with. And we're hoping that the end is in sight and we can get back to some kind of normal uh, either this spring or uh, for sure by September, we would hope. Daycare, live instruction, absolutely nothing to keep kids engaged while parents work from home. And I'm assuming that's the um, elementary level as well with your, with your son or daughter. Yeah, so in the districts that have the barriers, they're still putting um, the three feet apart. And we've done a little bit of research on that because I had a few parents mention about the barriers. And we're researching how we might be able to look at something along those lines. Um, that being said, the guidance from the state and the CDC are conflicting right now. So that was our big push when we met this week was to sort of tell New York State is that um, you can't be um, conflicting with the CDC because people are getting in, you know, wrong messages. So, um, and to the point of the barriers or without barriers, um, our infection rate at positive COVID rates at the elementary buildings have been lower. 
so i think that's why nationwide you'll see a push for that to go forward so hopefully sooner than later if it's with barriers or without we'll be able to see what that looks like to bring kids back more days a week all right um if there's not any other questions i want to remind you that um the board meeting starts at six today so i'm hoping um sometime after 7 7 30 depending how long the meeting goes i'll pop on again to do an evening version of this to ask uh, so parents who are working can ask questions in the afternoon in the early evening so they get their questions answered and just to kind of recap at the beginning um, we feel spectators are on the rise here and that we'll get the green light so all districts can do that again it might be different on the venue because we know some um, school districts don't have large uh, pool areas for those people to, for spectators to be but on the whole we're going to shoot for two but in some sports it might be one Yes, uh, board meetings are always live streamed, but they're not through Facebook. You have to go to the web page, which is www.ntschools.org. And if you click under the, it should pop up too, because there's one today, but um, you can even go back and watch old board meetings. They're ar archived there if you uh, type in Board of Education meetings, so you can watch them. So we are, let's see. Yeah, so there are um, some students who have IEPs and other um, underlying issues that um, the state required us to, to bring them back four days a week. They're typically in a smaller class to begin with, and uh, we're happy to expand on that, and that's what we've been trying to do uh, K through uh, 12, really, to sort of see who's, who's struggling and how we can get them more help if there's room in their classrooms. Oh, I see our technology person is watching and he just put up the link to the board meetings and the policy meetings uh, that are, uh, you can also get on the web page if you can't find this link later uh, when you want to do that. Uh, the policy meetings, which is the third Wednesday of every month, start at 6 and the regular board meetings, which are the first Wednesday of every month, start at 6.30. Uh, and that's in your district calendar if you have one of those. Uh, Will there be a full slate of spring sports? So right now, yes, we're not hearing that. The winter sports um, were delayed and kind of mixed up and, and chewed up a little bit and spit out um, because they're indoor, right? And you don't have that fresh air and you don't have all that piece. The outdoor spring sports, as far as I know, are on a roll. Now, if you say a full slate of sports, I don't know what that's going to look like for modified JV and varsity. Section 6, I know, though, is planning for that already so we can get that information out. And then there was talk at one point about a spring football season. Um, I know wrestling didn't happen this winter, but they're looking at maybe um, with more people getting vaccinated that wrestling can take place in the spring. So this year, yeah, it's not normal or typical for sports, but we're going to try and get them all in when we can and we have that guidance and the other schools fall in line as well, so we have other teams to play. So that's the plan um, going forward. All right, um, you can leave your comments here. Keep putting them in. We'll forward them. I'll be back this evening as well. And I hope you're all staying safe and warm. It looks like it's a nice sunny day after our uh, storm uh, yesterday, so I hope everyone survived that very well. And I will, what's this say? Yeah, so we already answered that one about sports. We're hoping to get it back. All right, take care, everybody, and we'll be back this evening.